and remember the substantial rating was 10% or beyond list us in the substantial which would only allow uh, special populations or elementary students to come into our buildings. Um, that is the guidance that we are going to continue to adhere to. So um, a safe return of a Monday or a Tuesday, January 19th return for all students in the hybrid fashion is not going to take place. So on um, Tuesday, we are going to get into um, the, the substantial rate and who we're going to bring in. But if you could take a peek at this last asterisk on this slide, you're going to see that Luzerne County has been substantial for 16 consecutive weeks. This is the highest consistent rate in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So right now we're living in the epicenter within the Commonwealth of positive cases that hasn't showed any um, subsidence whatsoever. So um, as a result, the state has assigned us, assigned Luzerne County Schools, a Department of Education liaison on how to uh, continue to navigate during these dangerous times. So um, the next slide is going to roll out as to how we are going to get our st students back to a safe return. So keeping in mind the substantial status for 16 straight weeks, um, we are going to slowly trickle our students back into our buildings. And on Tuesday, February 16th, the day after President's Day, we are going to bring our highest need students back into the building. So if you take a peek here at this slide, our artistic support, our emotional support, and our life skills classrooms will be our first on the agenda for a safe return. Um, other students that are considered or categorized as high, high need students will be a case by case basis. So our special education administrators and our director will reach out to families on a case by case basis with the offerings of a safe return into our buildings. Um, the next slide is going to speak of the proposed return of our general population into the buildings on March the 1st, uh, the proposed date, all of these dates are all subject to change based on the community health status um, with the positivity rates. Uh, today's rate of 25% is the best rate we have seen since October. So we are moving in the right direction, folks. However, we will continue to monitor the status. And if it keeps going in the trend that it was today, then we can get our highest need population and our general population back into the buildings. We will start matriculating these students back in as of March 1. Um, and we will do that in the format that we did in the fall, which is the hybrid A, B, or blue-white schedule. Building level principals will reach out to you about sp student specific category, uh, categorization, meaning um, reminding you and refreshing you of your memory, refreshing your memory of whether you are an A or a B or a blue or white schedule student. So um, just in case any folks had forgotten what their student was. Uh, March 1st would naturally include um, the elementary students based on the recommendation from the Department of Health, uh, beginning with kindergarten students. Okay, so students that are in the general population, uh, we would start matriculating them in at the elementary level, beginning with kindergarten. Every single additional population that we will add, we will be in some form of communication through a community update as we are doing right now, or a one call or social media updates um, by myself or your building level principal. Next slide is going to speak to the fact that all of these, if you remember from the fall, is all of your choice. So a parent that is sitting on here right now wondering whether you can just play it safe and keep your student in the remote format, not have to worry about any positivity cases, it's not gonna make a difference. Perhaps you and your family have settled into a nice routine and not have to worry about um, you know, any precautions you could always remain in this full remote format. Uh, this is um, something that we will continue to do until the end of the school year. However, if there are folks that want to partake 
in the hybrid format that's going to, uh, I'm gonna refresh your memory, that's going to be one week in the building, Monday through Thursday, Friday off for a deep clean, and then one week in the remote format, and then we will continue to alternate those weeks. As we begin this process, we will release the calendar that speaks to blue and white schedules. So it's an easy visual for our families to follow along. And as always, once we begin to bring students back into the buildings, we will be providing transportation. Um, but again, as it says on the top of this slide, it's always a parent choice. Parent wants to transport the student, that's more than uh, fine with us. But if not, we are going to bus students in accordance with all the guidelines set forth by the Department of Health and Education, um, one student per seat, window seat only for a maximum 18 on one bus. There are exceptions if, if they are siblings, we can share a seat if there's a controlled environment within the household. The very next slide is going to talk about the um, refresher memory of some of the safety measures that the Hanover Area School District has taken. Um, to make sure that our staff and our students always enter a safe environment. The very first step every day and each, each day in the morning is an entrance ticket. It was the scan with a smartphone or a, a, an iPad or a tablet of some sort to scan a barcode, which will prompt several questions uh, concerning any symptoms associated with COVID-19. And um, if there is a response of yes to any of those questions, uh, we, we would like you to keep those students home. Please do not send students into the building. And if you recall, last time we spoke, we were getting an installation of what they call a drift net security system, a Navigate 360, which is a monitoring system on the ceiling of every building in every classroom that monitors body temperature and symptoms uh, associated with uh, COVID-19 that would prompt uh, an emergency response of our school nurse and administration to uh, take the necessary protocols to get everyone to safety and remove the student um, experiencing those symptoms to a safe isolation zone and get those students to where they need to be. And if you recall in the fall, we had desk shields for every student. Um, those shields are cleaned, they are stored and um, they are one added layer of keeping a barrier between the already socially distanced classrooms and um, it, could, it continues to add layers of protective barriers between students atop of having to wear a mask in the buildings, okay? If you recall the Jan Pro spray, this was the surgical spray that was good for a six month period of time, um, very durable spray that kills COVID-19 on contact if there was someone to touch a light switch, a door handle, whatever it might be um, with any molecules or um, form of, of the virus, uh, it's killed on contact. Um, obviously we would continue to enforce the social distancing guidelines, but bringing our youngest students back first uh, being highest priority, we are going to have wall and floor indicators as we are going to suspect that a kindergarten student would not understand what six feet looks like. So um, indicators are on the floor and the wall to reinforce this, to assure optimal safety. And then again, as I said, Monday through Thursday education with constant cleaning by our maintenance and custodial staff um, throughout the course of the day, but then a deep clean and a, um, a disinfectant spray uh, on Friday to assure that there's a safe environment for the following week and the next round of hybrid students. Next slide is going to speak of um, if we did run into a positive case within the district. Okay, um, we're in an active educational day. Um, our drift net security system picks up an increased body temperature or some form of indication that a student is experiencing symptoms of COVID-19. Um, we will follow all guidelines set forth to isolate the student and get students to a protective area um, to minimize exposure any further than they have already experienced. Um, but then we are also going to uh, follow up with uh, staff and student possibly exposed, will receive a personalized phone call from our school nurse or our administrative staff 
notifying of a potential exposure and then you will be followed up with a, um, a notification in writing from the school district spelling out any guidelines from the Department of Health on how you get your recommended treatments and protect the, um, the spread of the virus any further. Um, the Department of Health and Education um, has also given us guidelines on how and uh, how long and how many days we need to uh, close a building for uh, appropriate disinfectant and um, sanitation purposes. So we will follow that matrices as it comes out. And then um, my mantra in the fall, if you remember, if we're spending more time outside the building due to positive cases and school closures, um, I will return us back to a remote status. Um, there is um, no need for families to attempt to settle back into a different routine other than what we have right now, which seems to be consistent to most folks. And we've settled into uh, a nice childcare situation or um, you know, uh, the, the, some type of learning platform that students are somewhat getting used to. Um, so there's no need to continue to interrupt and try to make attempts for families to get other child care issues uh, to create disruptions for you any further. Um, one side note that's not on this, um, not on this slide, if we could go to the next slide, I would like to explain um, a mitigation process that our central administrative team, along with our building level administrators, is that we are also understanding and being mindful that this has not been the uh, best semester for students to learn. Um, you know, the ability for the teachers, a student to walk up to the teacher and ask for a clarifying um, issue or, or, or to get a little further feedback is not readily available to students. And um, we're mindful that, you know, there's households where, where parents are not teachers. So we're mindful of the possibility of learning loss. Taking that into consideration, this administration is building um, a plan to try to mitigate as, as much loss as we can. And um, we are going to begin the process of trying to make any type of effort to have after school programs or have um, tutoring, whether it be on the weekend or throughout the course of summer, once we enter into a better health community status. But we are mindful of it, it is on the forefront and I understand that if it's a concern as a parent, um, that we do have this same concern. And we are going to try to mitigate this to the best of our ability. And we are analyzing student performance data that is historic. And what I mean by historic is if we see a student that is normally an 80 student that is now performing as a 70% student, um, we are going to take a close look at whether it has to do with this, um, this platform and the inability to have resources readily available to them um, if that's the reason why. So um, I'm mindful of this, it hasn't been the best, but um, we're trying to do the best that we can. And the most important thing is keeping you safe and keeping the people in your household safe and um, people in our community safe. Um, as a result, that has been the reason for the format we have chosen and I will continue to choose. So um, at this point, um, any additional questions that you may have, I'm gonna spend as much time to answer them with you. On the screen here, we have folks that um, can provide any additional resources or support to you based on what school your child goes to or if your child receives uh, title services or special education services. Everybody is listed on here that can help you any further. This also is being recorded and will be put onto our YouTube page, our Hanover Area School District YouTube page. Um, if you need to go back and refresh and look at anything or someone couldn't make it this evening, you could refer them to this uh, particular date on our page. But otherwise, please, if you have questions, take as much time as we possibly need and use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen and Mrs. Kitchen will call on you individually. And however long it takes, I'll be glad to spend that time with each and every one of you. Luke Matthews, do you have a question? 
Yeah, I do. Uh, hi, Mr. Barrett. Hi, hi Lisa. Um, hey, Mr. Matthews. <clears throat> so when you talk about March 1st uh, coming back, um, using the term general population, um, and then further down, you said something about the elementary level students first, beginning with kindergarten. Can you can you draw that out a little bit more for me? I, I don't quite understand what starting sure. with kindergarten means. Of course, yes. So um, what we would do is um, th there would be a general population of the students means that, um, as I just explained, students who receive specialized services are that high need category. So that's what I meant. So if there was an autistic support student, those are the students we're going to roll in first. OK, so um, and then the general population we're going to bring in. So um, the very first thing that we're going to do is the general population is a student that does not need services. We're going to begin at the kindergarten level and roll them in. I do not want to send high school, um, our four through six kids, or our four through five kids, our sixth grade kids, and everybody into the building all at once, and and have the uh, the possibility of a um, of being a super spreader, so to speak. Um, so when we go on March first, um, we are going to begin with the added layer of kindergarten students first. And then we'll take that week by week and we'll continually on a week by week basis add another layer of students. Because as, as if you recall in the beginning, uh, Mr. Matthews, that it's stating that the kids in the secondary level, they recommend keeping them out of the building in the remote status for right now. So my focus, I hope it's clarifying is that um, I get my elementary kids back first um, before or immediately following my highest need students. So I'm gonna begin with that. Got it. So the the um, the secondary students, once the, the level is below substantial, then they'll be considered, we'll start to when consider bringing them in. Yes, so moderate, once we reach moderate, we're, we're trending nicely. I mean, we came down 10 points in one week. Um, so if, if that continues to trend like that, maybe by February, um, when we're bringing our kids back, we might be a moderate. And then I'm calling another community night and saying, listen, we've, we've, we've dipped into, into moderate. We're bringing kids back on an AB schedule. So right now, um, this is all with the speculation that we're going to remain in substantial. And this is based on the recommendation of that liaison that was assigned to us. Um, we've been trending in substantial and haven't budged, but um, keep in mind, I have from today is exactly one month and two days away from the first student return physically. So you may be hearing from me in two weeks and saying, listen, we're going to be coming back to school um, in the moderate status. So, but Right now, this is my plan if we remain in substantial. Got it, appreciate it. No problem, I thank you. And I'm sorry if it wasn't that clear. It did, uh, now that I think about it, it did sound confusing. Avery? Hi, Avery. Avery, do you have a question? Okay, we'll move. Okay, Avery. All right, we'll move on to Jessica. Yes, hello. Um, I just have a question. Um, it really, it, I guess it doesn't really pertain to the going back to school portion of it, um, but with the homeschooling portion, I'm still having um, personally issues with the parent portal and I'm not getting any answers or help with it. Okay. All right. And so um, I can't even see where my kids are at and I'm not okay. getting, I mean, without bugging their teachers. Uh, Jessica, if you could see, could you see my screen? Yeah. With, with my email? Yep. If you could copy that down, please just give me contact information through that email. And then okay. um, our IT director or our, um, his counterpart will reach out to you tomorrow um, and and uh, help you through any technical assistance that they can. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's just difficult with being the homeschooling. I don't, like I said, I don't have access to everything to see exactly where my kids are at. And I know the quarter's ending and I'm basically having to have special meetings with their teachers 
to find out what they are, where they're even at. Okay, perfect. I know that's yeah, part you, on the teachers too. If you, yeah, if you could just send me that information, I'll, I'll pass that along uh, first thing in the morning. And um, at some point tomorrow, you'll be hearing from somebody. Walk you okay. through that. All right, that's all I needed. Thank you. You have a great evening, Jessica. We have a question from an iPhone guest. Yeah, I have a question. Come um, the first, if we're still in substantial, will kindergarten still go back? Yes, so th this is a plan if we remain in substantial. So um, on, on March the 1st, um, barring any increases further than what we're seeing right now, um, the projection is to bring them in in that AB schedule. So why are we waiting until March 1st? If we're the waiting. numbers are substantial, it's substantial. If we're in it now or if we're in it March 1st, they're going to go back. So why are we waiting another month and a half? My plan is to bring highest need students in and see uh, if we remain healthy. And then we're going to bring our general population in. I'm doing this slow and methodically. Okay. Does anyone else have a question for Mr. Barrett? I have a question. Go ahead, Kelly. Hi. My question is if we had chosen originally to keep our children home and now we decide we would like them to go back, is that an option? Of course, yes. So um, I don't know what slide it was, but everything is a parent choice. So all we have to do is communicate with the teachers as we approach close. So um, as we get back, no matter how we see you, whether it's online or in person, once okay. we estimate the return, we will take attendance as a quarter according to how we see you. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Melissa Williams. Hi, you had mentioned um, about um, recognizing that there's a need for some students who generally were, were good students prior to um, the virtual learning and now are struggling. And I have a child that falls into that category who mm -hmm. is struggling greatly and I am involved and we're doing everything we can, but he's facing where he's teetering in a couple of classes um, where he's failing for half the year. So how is that going to be handled by the yeah. district? Because and we've asked a, for help, but we're just not getting it. Okay, um, well, we'll have to talk in a more private setting about okay. that piece if you were asked for support and not receiving it. But um, we're, what we're doing is we are taking the, the data that supports what we're seeing of historical data of your student what I mean by mm -hmm. historical, I, I mean, you mentioned kindergarten, so we don't have historical data with your child, but if we saw a kid that was normally an A student now dropping to a C student, um, we're, we're going to take into consideration that it has to do with this format. And um, once we're able to change this format, we will do um, educational strategies to try to give a massive uptick in the performance. So the mm -hmm. change is going to have to be made once we see in person, because if it has to do with this format um, right now, it's not safe to change it. Um, so once we have that ability, that's when those strategies will go into play. This isn't for my kindergartner. This is a high schooler. So oh, my is mistake. there somebody okay. I should, that's okay. Is there somebody I should reach out to? Cause he doesn't well, have like any like special like help. Otherwise he was a normal, no IEP, no F504 or anything. Okay, so if, yeah, any, if you want to, the, my email is on that screen there. If you want to send me specific information and okay. um, we, we could speak in a more private setting where okay. um, we, we, we could get you what you need. Okay, thanks. Cassandra McDaniels. Uh, yes, I just have a quick question. We're new to the school district this year. We have three students and 
my oldest is in sixth and she was doing poorly to begin with, but she's doing better now. But my fifth grader and my kindergartner are doing absolutely horrible. My fifth grader has an IEP and I was wondering if that is considered um, special education level or not. It, it is. So on the screen here, if you see the third person down, Mrs. Bennett, okay. okay. Um, the, uh, the email address that's there, if you could possibly um, send her an email and, and please put me on it as well. Okay. Um, and and then we'll we'll uh, we'll get you the service that we need again. As I said, to keep the confidence of of your child and um, and yourself, we'll, we'll set up a time that's more appropriate to help. Because like he was a straight A student at Valley West, and now I his teachers are doing amazing with him. I give his teachers all the credit in the world, but it's just like I'm afraid. I know even though you said you're going to work with tutoring and stuff, that he's going to fail because of how poorly he's doing. And again, uh, you know, in the past, we, our teachers have been doing an amazing job of, of grading with compassion and understanding. As long as there's effort put forth, and I'm not saying your child not, and, and please don't take it that way that I'm being facetious at all. I'm just saying to you that um, our teachers, if you just let them know that normally that's what his grades were, um, they have been doing a wonder, wonderful job with dealing with compassion. And I just have one more question um, regarding my kindergartner. Yesterday, we were supposed to have a meeting with Mike McCree, and I called his office. I left him a message. I got a letter in the mail saying when the meeting was the time, and I tried calling everywhere else, and I could got, not get in touch with anyone, and I'm still waiting to hear back. Okay. Uh, his email is right here on the left. It's the last one on the screen. Okay. You could either take uh, a photo of that or write it down. Um, you send him an email, and... Uh, and um, he will get back to you first thing in the morning. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. You have a wonderful, day. wonderful. Jessica Booth. Hi, I'm sorry. I was a little late. When are the special needs kids going back to school? Tuesday, February 16th. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Gina Thomas. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, Tina. Okay, I just want first. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thank you um, to you for all that you've done and keeping everyone safe. And I also wanted to say thanks um, to my children's teachers. The sixth and ninth grade teachers have been awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate those kind words. And I, I'm sure those teachers do as well. Yep, so pass that on and we're really happy and no complaints. They just wanted to let you know. Thanks again. Appreciate All the right. positivity. All right. No problem. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Bye. Leanne Yukonavich. Hi. Um, I had a question about the pre-K students. Was there a return plan for them? Yes. So um, there's going to be a, a different night held for pre-K. Uh, Dr. Pugh is going to handle um, a, a community night similar to this at the beginning of next week and roll out the pre-K plan at that point. Great, thank you. Thank you, Leanne. There are no more questions, Mr. Barrett. Okay, folks, I really appreciate you coming on here and I thank you. Anybody needs anything further, please contact me through email there and we'll get back to you immediately. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Teresa. Thanks. Mr. Barrett. Yes. It's Hillary Gasper. I'm sorry. I just also wanted to tell you thank you, Mr. Barrett. I know you have a lot of heavy decisions that you have to make daily, and I think you are making the best decisions. So I also wanted to tell you thank you for that. Speaking out from an, a school employee, <laughs> and I'm not saying it because I don't want to work. Actually, our students are doing great what they're doing online. I, I really can't believe how great they're doing, but um, I just wanted to tell you thank you again because I know they're bad, tough decisions, and I guess you can't win either way you go, but um, well, you said before- if people are healthy. People well, are healthy, you said, we're winning. Exactly. You said um, 
safety is the most important thing. And I say this a lot. I know people say that, you know, my students losing out on this or missing that, but um, coming from a health perspective, uh, nothing else matters if you're not healthy. And that, to me, that's what's the most important thing. So thank you for making tough decisions. I appreciate that. And thank you. All right, Mr. Barrett, I'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care. And there's the most handsome face I've ever seen. Hi, James. <laughs> oh, there's Jimmy boy. All right. Good night. See you tomorrow, Take Jim. Bye-bye. Yeah. Hi. Hi, James. How are you, pal? I miss you, buddy. I, I know. I miss you, too. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to come to pool. Can't wait to see you again, buddy. Congratulations yeah, I, on I all your awards. You back my job with you. I know. I still have your badge. Waiting to go. Yeah. <laughs> all um, right, handsome. See, see ya. I Take care. Bye-bye, uh, everybody. Take care, folks. <laughs> Mr. Barrett, I have a question. Go ahead, Mr. Gow. Hey, uh, how about the kids that have that are asthmatic? Because all three of my kids are asthmatic, and my nephew also. Uh, I'm just curious on how that's going to work with the masks and everything. Okay, well, you you a have the option where you don't have to send them. Okay, that's always an option for you if you feel that's the best. Um, but there will be mask breaks at the discretion of the teacher. masks are going to be required yeah no i knew they were required i just wanted to you know are they going to get the breaks you know with the you know with the kids that are asthmatic and, you know i'm not sure. talking just for mine it's the other kids as well you know because of course yeah and i appreciate my that one, my main one is clear she's very bad asthmatic she goes through all types of uh has all types of medication for it uh so it's like i want to you know double check on how that's going to work with all kids yeah, and that's gonna uh, we'll we'll have to communicate with that that with the teachers, uh, and um, you know they'll they'll use their discretion. They'll give times uh, and mask breaks, but um, it would be at the comfort level and the health status of the teacher, um, as well. So we 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 have to be mindful of everybody in the surrounding area and as well as you as your child and the others experiencing the same thing. So um, make sure we try to do the best we can to accommodate all. All right, thank you very much. It was nice seeing you. Nice seeing you, buddy. Mr. Barrett, there's one last question. Kylie Sock. Hi, Kylie. Kylie, do you have a question? Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. There, Mr. Barrett. Mr. Sock, I'm here. All right. I, I don't know how to operate this, so that's okay, away. buddy. <laughs> um, so here, here's my questions: like the Shine program. Once once the kids return back to school, are they gonna are they going to be using the school for able to get the Shine program back into the school? I can't guarantee that. Um, I just want to get us off the ground right now before right. we continue to add layers uh, of of educational components like that. Um, so if you don't mind, I could get back to you on that because I'm just trying to get these kids back safely right now, um, as well as my staff. And um, it, it's, you know, this is, this is, uh, I, I'm not very comfortable um, bringing people back in, in, in the state um, mandating this, as I said before in the past, um, you know, we were hunkered down for the storm. The eye of the storm is right above us right now. And they're asking us to come out of the bunker, and I don't like it. Um, uh, uh, listen, I, I get you. So, I, I spent my week in a hospital with COVID. So trust me, I know. Uh, yep. So um, the purpose of me saying that is please don't ever take it as disrespectful to you. No, but no, I, I'm just nervous all. to bring them back, period. So I haven't even gotten there yet. So I'm sorry I'm unprepared for your answer. No, and that's not a problem. I, I wasn't sure because, uh, like, my son, my fourth grade son, he's – He's giving me a, a, a run for my money here, learning virtually. So, and but his teachers have been fantastic with communicating with me through via email 
and I try to get on top of everything, you know. Uh, sure. My my next question would be, I, I noticed a, a few of the school districts uh, for athletic purposes are allowing two parents into the to the gym to watch uh, games. Yes, sir. Uh, is is Hanover looking to do the same or 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 not? So um, for for the gymnasium that we have, it's a ten percent capacity right now, according to the Department of Health standards. So um, we house one thousand people, so it limits us to a hundred people. So um, it varies based on sport. So there is going to be a formula that comes out. And um, right now with senior, with basketball, um, we're allowing one senior parent each. And, um, but I will have that schematic put on our website, if you don't mind, because it's going to vary based on JV. It's going to vary based on wrestling because the less and less people in the gymnasium the more and more parents we can we, we can allow in. And what I mean by people is if we have cheerleaders, which we do for the varsity squad, um, we have coaching members, we have press, we have the opposing team and their coaching staff. Um, the more and more people that we need to allow in just to participate limits the amount of parents. So um, right now we were working on that um, because wrestling, our numbers are low as far as a team uh, participation is concerned so we could we could let both parents in for wrestling but yeah um, my my son plays junior high basketball so that's that's the only reason i was i was uh i was so asking. we're going to try to eliminate um you know if, if there's you know if there's a if there's no cheering there then we can allow both parents but we're yeah we're I, there's to... only it's only me i'm by myself so it, okay it, i'm sorry and, and no that's okay that's why i was i was curious so you'll uh, be allowed so you will be allowed all right, because I know they're starting this weekend. So yep. I didn't know if I would be allowed in this weekend or are we going to push that off yet? Is it, for is it girls or boys? Week? Boys. Okay, you're good. Okay, so I can come to the game <laughs> on Saturday. Mr. Barrett, it's Mike McCree. Uh, oh, okay. Bart Reynolds. Not, not yet with the seventh day three. Um, there's another issue with that league because it's run through the west side. So we have yeah. to work through some things with that. Um, you know, so this week it'll be live streamed. And then once we get some clarity, there's some things with officials not wanting to ref if we allow fans in. So we have to work through that. So after this week, hopefully we'll be able to have some you no know, fans on that game, depending, again, with the numbers of, you know, participants on both teams, because we're going to have the seventh grade team in the gym and the eighth grade in the, in the gym. So depending on the number, the formula and how many they're bringing, It'll determine, you know, how many, can, you know, allow in, whether it's one ticket per participant, two tickets per participant. So, you know, we'll hopefully have that worked out uh, with the seventh, eighth grade, probably no fans at any other games. Cause if you look at the thing I'm going to post tonight, not many other schools besides Lake Lehman are letting junior high parents in. Okay. Well, my, I believe my son's also going to play freshman. That's why that was my other. Yeah, the, so fr the freshmen, we, we'll, we, don't, we won't have a problem at all. And then we'll post as we do uh, our opponents if they're allowing fans in or not. So right. we're, we're, we're okay. trying. It's just, no, no, and I get that because I, right. I, coach, I coach myself. So And I'm, I'm running stuff at, yeah. at different gyms. So I, I get it and whatever the case may be. Um, and again, like, not, not the point, but we had, we had 90 people at our boys' basketball the, of the, the other night without any – you know, parents at the game. So Spectators. we'll have the formula and it may change, you know, opponent to opponent. So Bert, a quick question for you, Bert, is um, the, is it because of the officials or why aren't we using our formula for seventh and eighth grade? Uh, seventh, eighth grade is a separate league. Um, the West side, both tech and some of those officials won't ref at places if they allow fans, you know, maybe because uh, again, you know, they're more susceptible to the COVID. Right. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, okay. and again, same thing. We're, we're going to work with the officials. We're going to work with other teams with, with the masks and, you know, we're going to try to keep our kids as safe as possible. Knock on wood. We got three uh, RC events in no issues and, you know, kids are doing well and competing. Wonderful. Sorry for the misinformation, Mr. Sock. That's, that's all right. I, I was kind of going with, I, my thought pattern was going the same way as Mr. McCree's anyway, uh, okay. because I, I, I know that there will be substantial amount of players. I mean, obviously, our seventh grade team's a little, little less than most because I think there's only five kids. But uh, you know, and then the eighth grade would be more kids, and 
you know, and I, and I get that bumps up the numbers. I, I definitely understand that. Um, then what was my, I, I had a third question. Now that I lost my train of thought. Um, so um, I, 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 re I, I really can't think of it right now. There was, there, I did have a third question. There was, there was three in my head and I, I just saw uh, for some reason I lost it. Um, so, cause I was trying to figure out how to even get onto this thing <laughs> to, to be honest, but uh, um, I'm just, I, I just can't, for some reason I can't think of it right now, uh, Mr. Bart. Um, okay, maybe there's I, another question and we could circle back. This is Kitchen, do we have another question? You do not, Mr. Barrett. Um, but it's, it's, it, obviously it must not be as super important as I thought it was. Uh, How about, did you get I, the email that I, uh, my email address? Yeah, I, I can get it. That's not a problem. Okay. Uh, if I think of it, I will, I will, uh, uh, I, I'll shoot an email regarding it. So, and then my, my, actually, uh, my fourth question was going to be, how is, how is Mr. Uh, how's coach gray? Um, that, um, that was. That's another concern, uh, obviously, for my son. And, and uh, uh, we're concerned. Know. We're all wishing him the best. Um, I, I appreciate your concern, and we'll let him know that you were asking about him. That's very uh, nice of you. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Actually, I, I did reach out to him a while back, and he was in the hospital the same time I was. So that's, oh so, yeah, yeah. Right, that's so, nice of you. Thank you for the concern. We'll pass that along. Uh, very nice but, of you. Uh, I, um, yeah, like I said, there was a, there was a, I, I have a lot of questions usually that pop into my head. I don't always write them down because I, I got so many other things going on and not enough time to write them down. But, uh, but I will have some more questions. And when I do, can uh, I'll just forward them through in an email and see what you have, have to say. Always here. So, but like I said, the, the two teachers that my, my one son has for fourth grade, they've been, uh, they've been very outstanding yeah, at communicating with me. And, uh, and for him to get in trouble. So, uh, but uh, I do appreciate their, their help and their, their uh, commitment to try to help get through all this. Well, I appreciate those kind words and I'll pass that along to the fourth grade teachers and um, appreciate your kind words and your patience through this. No, no, no problem. I, you know, I can only do what we can do, right? So. That's right, we you're we right. Can't, we can't fix it, so. Um, now here's a question. If the kids, you know, say, say the kids get that, get the vaccine. Will that, will that automatically start eliminating a lot of the, the stuff? Because I plan on having my kids vaccinated as soon as I can, since I, I, uh, work in law enforcement, you know, I, I'm eligible to get mine. The only problem is they told me since I had the COVID and the antibodies, I had to wait 90 days. It's it's still gonna it's gonna prevent them from being ill. Obviously, I'm not a medical for, professional, but yeah, it's gonna prevent them from being ill. But there's still a passing a pass through agent that they could get others sick. So, um, okay, we're, we're still gonna monitor that closely. Even though you are vaccinated, you could still um, be a spreader. So, um, but uh, again, you know, I, I'm no medical expert by yeah. any means. No, I get I get you. It's, it's Megan McCabe, the school nurse. Um, I make, there's the, the medical vaccine, expert. <laughs> the vaccine is not approved for anyone under the age of 16 at this point. Um, uh, so unfortunately, none of the kids are going to be eligible until it goes through the trials for kids through the CDC and it gets uh, approved for them. Oh, okay. Well, that's so. I mean, I'm not super concerned. All my kids have it. So, <laughs> um, so I, I, like at this point in time, I'm. I'm not, we're not super concerned about it. And my kids actually, one had a runny nose and a cough for a day and the other, the other two didn't have anything. So, but, uh, so, all right. Well, thank you for your Thanks, time. Thanks, Mr. Sock. Thanks. Nice talking to you. You too. Take care. Have a good evening. You too. Ms. Right. Kitchen, we have anything further? No, that's all, Mr. Barrett. Okay. Everybody have a wonderful night. Thank you very much. Thanks, Megan McCabe. Thanks, Bert Reynolds. Talk soon. Okay.